the blood clots we are talking about, you know, that we are worried is the major vessels blood clots, such as over the leg. And those that affect the lung vessels, those can actually affect the blood circulation, affect how you breathe. So those are the important ones. Hello everyone, welcome to Misconception. Today with me we have Dr. Li Yushan, a hematologist at Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital, Singapore. Today we will talk about D-dimer. I have a few patients from Indonesia who are worried about raised D-dimer after COVID infection. They are worried and want to get it down. I also feel that D-dimer test is performed more regularly without clear indications. What do we do when the D-dimer is elevated? And do we need to be concerned if the D-dimer is high? Will it lead to something serious? We put this question directly to the expert. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Tony Stiobudi, an orthopedic surgeon at Mount Elizabeth Hospital, Singapore. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification button. I will share more medical information that is useful for all of us. Yushan, thank you for your time today. Thanks for inviting. <laughs> no problem. What is D-dimer? Can you explain? I think uh, I agree I with you that uh, we have a lot of uh, consultation about high D-dimer. So what is high D-dimer? Maybe we can share with this uh, uh, small diagram about where the dimer come from. Okay, in our body, you know, we always have uh, this uh, small blood clots and, and uh, for small, small bleeding and also from some small of this uh, um, vessels injury. So that's when we find blood clots, which is what we call fibrin, okay? And this fibrin, of course, our body have a way to actually break away these blood clots. And the one of this product from breaking away of this fibrin or blood clots is a, what we call a byproduct. This called D-dimer. D-dimer. Now, D-dimer previously is used only if we suspect patients having a very bad infection, causing all this uh, low platelet and bleeding, or when we suspect patient having these uh, blood clots in the legs or in the chest when patient presented with chest pain, difficulty in breathing. Now comes the era of this uh, COVID infection where everybody is very worried, right? Because some of this uh, um, patient with the uh, down with COVID and all those, especially those in admitted in ICU, they have a higher risk of getting a blood clots in the lung leading to a higher risk of a chance of patient uh, died from this uh, uh, known complication. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of uh, study now um, understand to understand you know why we have this uh, uh, clots in COVID yeah. patients yeah. a lot of this had to do with the inflammation in the vessels okay. but I think we have to know that the uh, D-dimer is not only presence in patient having a clots it okay. is a not not the very specific markers mm -hmm. okay for example this D-dimer can be high even in patient having a pregnancy yeah. Delivery, you know, of this uh, a child or a baby can have a high D-dimer. Okay. Patient having an infection also can have high D-dimer. This can be ranging from a bacterial infection, viral infection, everything. In pregnancy and infection, D-dimer mm -hmm. is raised. Is it related to blood clot? It is related because, you know, any other um, blood forms of this uh, infection, right? You can small, small blood clots we call microvascular from this. Okay. So this is actually a way that the uh, the immune system works. Uh. Like okay. for pregnancy, in the other way, they have a small clots to prevent the, the, the pregnant lady from excessive bleed. So it's known to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, high D dimer. Okay. In uh, so because I'm a hematologist, sometimes we do see patients having a uh, cancer. And it is also known to be increased in patient having a cancer. Okay. Right. So in and conclusion, this is not a very specific markers. Yeah. But all are related to blood clot. Yeah. yeah. So what the blood clots we are talking about, you know, that we are worried is the big, the ma uh, major vessels blood clots, such as over the leg, right? You can mm. see a blood clot there, big. And those that affect the lung vessels, those can actually affect the blood circulation, 
affect how you breathe. So those are the important ones. Small blood clots, like, you know, micro and micro thrombi, these are the ones you can't even diagnose. Yeah. All right. Those are the ones that clinically will not affect your lung function. When the dimer is high and the patient is healthy, do we need to chase this number down? So in this era of COVID and vaccination, uh, we do see a lot of patients having raised D dimer. If the patient is well, you know, without any leg swelling, right? No chest pain, no difficulty in breathing, right? There's no need for you to chase this number down. You know, only thing if you suspect a you know, patient having some other symptoms, for example, leg swelling, yes, you look for whether patient have a blood clot, all those things, or patient having loss of weight, then you have to think of whether patient having a cancer. Yeah. Or patient having injury, you think of all this injury, not like everything D dimer high, you go to a blood clot. Okay, so a few things that we need to rule out when the D dimer is high blood clot mm. in the legs, blood clot mm. in the lungs, injury, cancer, infection. Is yes. there anything else that we need to rule out? Something serious that we need to rule out when the D dimer is high? Well, they're actually a long list, you know, but more importantly, you know, getting a good clinical history and then you have to go and see your doctors. Not, not all the high D-dimer is related to clots. We have to see in the whole context, whole perspective. Yeah. Something yeah. like, you know, uh, we have sedentary lifestyle, smoking, obesity, sometimes also can lead to higher blood clots. Some liver injury also can have a higher liver, higher uh, D-dimer. Okay. Yeah. I think previously we never checked routinely. Now with the COVID era, everybody check until that level that I don't know what's the meaning of D-dimer anymore. Yeah. If we have ruled out those serious things and mm -hmm. D-dimer is still high, do we need to be worried? So, okay, let's say your patient have a high D-dimer. If you rule out, there's no blood clots in the lung, the blood clots in the leg, I think we do not have to check. And patient is well, no symptom to suggest mm -hmm. any cancer. I think you can just monitor. Don't have to chase and you know do things that uh, to reduce the number. I know it's very common practice that some patient without any infection, without any other symptoms, have a high D dimer because the routine blood check now so called yeah. routine, yeah, right. And they will be put on the medication to prevent them from uh, getting a clot. I think this is a little bit yeah. over exaggerated kind of response. Yeah, I have a few patients like that. And the management is actually, I just monitor and somehow I even take off the uh, blood thinner and they yeah. did well, they are, they are, they, yeah. there's no, they never come back to me and say, hey, I have the blood clots now. Yeah. So we don't have to be too exaggerated in our response and giving yeah, yeah. this uh, blood thinner. I have some patients very well after COVID, but recover very well. The dimer is mm -hmm. high and the patient was given blood thinning medicine. Mm -hmm. I feel that this is over treated but i'm not the expert that's why i ask you to explain so yeah. if the patient is well the damage is high we have ruled out all the serious things we don't need to treat high the damage right yes in summary okay. so those patients having a, a covid infection i mean some of them if they are admitted in serious icu the the doctor physician there in the hospital will assess whether the patient needs some preventive dose preventive dose are huh? not treatment dose yeah mm. when we talk about treatment for the clot we have the, the range from preventive dose to the treatment dose so those having a in icu yeah sometimes they will benefit from preventive dose of blood thinner after they are discharged you know like one month later we are well i think we can take this out and uh, there have been studies trying to look at you know whether patient will benefit from higher dose of blood thinner after discharge or no. No, there's no indication. Some after right. discharge, you can stop. The patient is ambulating well, eating well, hydrating well. Okay. But of course, you have to assess uh, personally. Lah. Okay. So in summary, um, if the D dimer is high, we need to rule mm. out a few things like blood clot in the leg, blood clot in the lungs, infection cancer, injury, and so on. If we have ruled out all these serious things and the D-dimer is high, we don't need to treat the D-dimer even with blood thinning medication. Thank you so much, Yushan, for sharing valuable information to us. We are learning a lot of things from you. And I also want to thank those who are watching this video. Feel free to type some comments and questions. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video and see you again in the next misconception bye bye